Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to game two, EG versus Secret. EG now six and three. Secret are slipping a little bit though, Lumi. They gotta win out if they wanna have a realistic shot at making it out of the groups and into the upper bracket. So the draft begins, we'll get into it early. As far as adjustments here, anything that's jumping out with you for these first phase bans? No, I felt like last game was one of those games where it wasn't determined by the picks. I felt like both teams had a very realistic chance. Team Secret had to play better. Uh, they had a harder lineup to execute. And even that, they did execute to a point where they were about to win. And then, you know, the unspeakable happened. So I, I think moving into game two, Secret should just focus on their own game plan and just try to execute a little bit better. Yeah, they're going to mix it up here. They go for some more reliable initiation rather than the charge. It will be the Bat Rider. As a first overall pick. Uh, of course, Nyx was already removed. Probably the Batrider's most obnoxious predator. But still, EG. They get their hands on the Void. So big team fight already secured. Nice and early. Yep. And you never know where this Void is going. He could be mid. <laughs> he could be off lane. I mean, hell, maybe Arteezy will play on one of these days. Most likely, it's going to be an off lane universe Void. One of his best heroes. In I, fact... I agree. I, I think especially after how that mid Void game went, they're probably just... Like, yeah, <laughs> let's just let's just stick with old Reliable. Ooh. I All love right. this, though. The Pugna got second stage banned last game, I believe, yes. along with Anti-Mage by Secret. So EG, they recognize if they want it, they got to get it early. Also, Faces Void got first phase ban last game. It seems like EG has been putting a lot of emphasis on getting Universe's hero early. If the things like Nyx and Void is banned, uh, they go Bat. And if Bat's picked, Void is in the pool, they'll pick up Void. Now, I do want to say that I remember for EG, it's it's been Crit playing the Pugna. I don't know if they've been doing things a little bit differently in the International so far. I'll t quickly do some data check, but... Do you expect this to be a, the core Pugna we've been seeing so, so many times uh, from the other teams? Like perhaps Sumail playing it? I I can't I don't know if I actually got to see EG playing the support Pugna. I like him core. I think he does he uses farm well. I think he offers a lot with levels, so I'm I'm biased, I'm a Pugna fanboy. I would root for him to be a core hero every time, but uh, and how I'd love to see Sumail play him. But it's definitely a lot less risky. Yeah. Um Oh, they played it two days ago, which is day one, so let's quickly check it out. Um Sumail, middle, Pugna. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I think it's his strongest position. I, I, I just think the experience is super useful for Pugna, as well as like, you know, it's so easy to get to the enemy tower. Like the distance is so short that you can get lots of damage on it relatively easily compared to some of the other lanes. So uh, that would be my preference. But, you know, I think that's the nice thing for EG is technically you're not entirely sure. It could be a spark of Pugna, could be a mid void, probably not but you never 100% know. Yeah, that's the one thing that I, I do notice about Zai's draft, and most of the other t top teams draft these ways, they, they, they pick heroes that could go into multiple positions. It's almost always Sumail playing it, now that I've checked a couple of replays that uh, he has played in it, but Zai has also played it a couple of times. So, again, versatile pick. PL was the reply from Secret, as they will ban the Illusion Destroyers, the Earth Shaker, the Sand King. So I like those bans by secret, because they can really ruin a PL's day. Uh, and with that, how good of a PL game is it? Do you, PL obviously can feast on a Pugna once he gets a Diffusal Blade. Yes, and I think that is the primary reason they pick it up, because the Crab is such an annoying spell to... Because we, we saw throughout the tournament, it's been used as an offensive nuke, also a defensive save. So a lot of utility that you can have just on a Pugna, and PL says, no, 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 we're going to... Shut that out of the window. Now, against Faces Void could be a, a different story. Uh, we, we do see some of the late game scenario where PL just goes onto the Void, burns all of his mana, and then you just get the quick kill. But that's not till much, much later. And now we're going to see the EG hero that they selected a lot during day one. The Zai Elder Titan. Walks in the lanes and start stapling people with his big hammer. Oh, the Yapsar Rubik comes out. I love watching Yapsor play Rubik. He is my new favorite Rubik player. I am unabashedly a huge fan of his Rubik, and I mean, I guess the question will be how good of a Rubik game is it? Uh, there's some okay spells to steal. All of Void's spells are amazing to steal. Yeah, I mean, they are. Uh, I, I don't know how often he'll get to steal Chrono. Generally, Void it's not tend to prioritize the Rubik fairly heavily if they're worried about it. That's true. It's the way that Void normally plays, he time walks in Chrono, and if you're worried about getting a steal, you could just use the uh, 
the, the time dilation, dilation right, right away. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's, yeah, with the new Void, I don't think it's as easy to steal as it used to be with when he had two abilities and two passives. Right. And also, Elder Titan spells are kind of awkward to steal. Like, you could, I don't know, steal a spirit, but then, you know, what are you going to really do with that spirit? And we're going to see Marana as well. Now, normally, Sumel plays... So that's a Sum... Yeah, actually, is yeah. that... Is that a, how is it being played? Because normally it is Sumail and the Marana. I mean, I'm sure Arteezy could also play it. It could be an Arteezy Pugna. We have seen a little safe lane Pugna okay. here and there. You know, I wouldn't rule it out. I'm still leaning on a Pugna mid and a Marana safe lane. Could be a Marana support. Sure. Technically. That, that is how drafts go these days. You just don't know until the very end. In fact, sometimes you don't even know once you see all five heroes. <laughs> As last game, they were swapping in and out and... Who are you rooting for in the Arcana battle, Lumi? Uh, I honestly don't care either way. I really love both of the heroes. I play both of the heroes. Um, I was rooting for Sniper. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty ho ho ha ha. I'm glad he didn't win. He's just got the best voice, like the best like voice work for me in the game. So many, so many just incredibly obnoxious lines that always come out at the most chafing possible moment for your opponent <laughs> it's perfect for pissing people off like you guys think the chat wheel is good sniper was the early beta of the chat wheel like his entire oh, voice okay. was all his voice lines i see i'm a i'm a fan of the luna voice work you know selling some mayonnaise getting in there team secret looking for likely a carry and a secondary support I'm assuming the PL is going mid, but obviously that could, you know, be up in the air as well. Whenever someone says Luna, I just think of how Toby says it. Lunar. <laughs> Lunar. Tober. Doder. Doder. Triggerder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you're getting me a little trigger right now. Let's stop. Uh, that's Evil like... geniuses. Okay, <laughs> let's stop. Maroner. Um, yeah, so fourth pick. What does Secret need here? Let's see. It's a, a Reiki. Reiki. All right. Well, right from the get-go, you get some very good ganks uh, versus heroes like Faces Void and Marana. Prevent that uh, initial ability, for, or the escape ability from coming out. We haven't seen a Ricky for a while, I want to say. At least not any successful ones. I think Infamous has run it recently in, in the tournament. So, but when you look at Ricky, why Ricky over Tree or I guess the other one that we saw two days ago was Bounty Hunter. They want to apply pressure in the laning stage and force kills. Uh, tree and Bounty, these are heroes that could help you harass, but they are not going to be able to kill Faces Void and Marana. That is the, the primary advantage that you get from Ricky. Also, Ricky allows you to ward much easier in the lanes. And you could sneak some. When you have Ricky on your team, you could ward some crazy wards. Like, for example, if you want to ward their base during a high ground siege, you can't do that with any of the hero, because as soon as you plop down the ward, they will see you doing it. With Ricky, that's you could do that anytime you want. So, just uh, slightly small edges here and there, but mostly for the ganks on Void and Marana. The smoke cloud is also quite strong against Pugna in particular, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned it could be good against Void. Uh, you know, Pugnas do not normally want to build an early BKB or a Yules or yep. even a Force Staff. Like, they want to get sure. Aether Lens, they want to get Ags, they want to get BOTs. Uh, maybe at that point they go into a BKB. So I think there's a pretty long window where the Ricky Cloud can really punish the Pugna. It also really pressures how Faces Void can play in the mid game, right? Because normally you jump in and you chrono. Can you imagine the Void jumps in into a cloud and you're like, well, <laughs> I'm suddenly in a terrible spot. So that's something that the Ricky player will be looking to do as well. I imagine this has to be the puppy Ricky, right? Normally, I think Gapsor plays a Ricky type hero, but he's just so good on the Rubik. You give you give Gapsor the Rubik, yeah. E. And you give mid one. mid one his Invoker. So we're gonna see the uh, MPPL instead. Invoker versus Pugna, you know, wanna, you always want to have like magic damage to punish those defensive decrepifies. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like that about the Invoker pick. Gives them some late game insurance. They're a little light in the team fight department, though, Lumi. Unless Yapsor has a big game. And I, mean, I say, he, I, say that like a, I say that like it might happen when I can't recall the last time he's had a bad Rubik game. All right. So. Over under on the fact that he will steal Chronosphere and then steal Earth Splitter. 
and then just the one same, man combo in the though. same fight in the same fight and just one man combo uh i think that's pretty long odds is like, he also... <laughs> elder titan's ult comes out from like long range right he's normally not in the middle of the fight at yeah, that stage the of the game. with the magic hands man yeah i will believe i will believe if he had the arcana <laughs> which i which i know is coming Ooh. Shadow Shaman. You know, like Bruno yesterday just did the. It's like I know something that you don't. He's like, oh, one of the heroes, is the the hero that's winning is only winning by 0.22 percent or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just sitting here. Yeah, cool, God cool story, Bruno. Thanks. So, you know, are you gonna tell us who it is? I like, know. Thanks, Bruno. First, he, first he abandons our panels, <laughs> then he taunts us with all his insider knowledge. Okay, we still love him. All right, so it is going to be a puppy, Ricky, and of course the Absolor, Rubik. I don't think, uh, you know, we talked about that a lot of these heroes could go into different roles, but it seems like they did go into the most probable role with Sumail playing the mid Pugna, Mirana being handled by Arteezy, and of course the final pick on uh, the uh, the Crit Shadow Shaman. So I, I really like the Crit Shadow Shaman pick uh, because it basically forces the Ricky to be in that lane. If he isn't in the, the lane to, to help out the Batrider, the Batrider gets absolutely wrecked in the lane. So then uh, you pick the hero that you want to be all over the map with them, but by having the Shadow Shaman, it forces the Ricky to be on one lane. That is a, a pretty good way to control where the Ricky can go. That's certainly true. Uh, interestingly, uh, we are going to see Universe heading towards the safe lane for now as the Void. So are they trying to dodge something here, Lumi? Void heading top, it looks like the Batrider will be there. So that will leave Sumail, or sorry, uh, probably Arteezy heading bottom as the Mirana. So off lane Mirana, at least initially. Oh, they want to give the 1v1 lane. How does, does Void Void versus Bat, is that more favorable, I guess, than the Mirana, you think? Or I think that's a terrible lane yeah. for the Void. Like, Void is really good against high burst damage. Batrider, you know... Repeated burst damage with a couple of napalms on you and just flies over. You you can jump away, but if you have like four or five napalm on you, Batrider will just catch up and just kill you. It's not like your Legion where you can just cleanse off all the napalm, right? So. Right. So it, it's more of like they EG feels that they could actually pressure MP pretty hard, and that seems to be the case here. I, I don't know how MP is going to be able to I handle actually, this lane. Yeah, you know, I saw the the PL and. I was like, well, maybe we'll see a mid PL. You know, that used to be something that MVP Phoenix would do a lot. Um, and maybe a mid one would play something, you know, different, but not appearing to be the case. It's oh. going to be that safe lane PL for now. EG takes three rune puppies, tries for one. Um, didn't get it. Lost half of his HP. There is no way that he's going to get this courier snipe, right? That courier is going to just sit on the ramp. There we go. Now, you were talking about this matchup earlier. The the one thing that Invoker does give is uh, high physical damage, and Pugna is one of the lower armor heroes early on. So I could see a level 3 or something. In fact, it might happen right now. The right clicks are coming in. There is Cold Snap available. Yaps are coming in, applying the right click. Ricky perhaps will cut him off. Oh, he wants to. He's waiting behind oh that Oh my god, Zai? He also knows. Oh, Zai actually gets the first blood. EG, big opportunity there. I think that we're banking on, like, get Sumail low, and then the Courier's gonna have to come out and ferry him regen. And meanwhile, in the trees, Secret might lose another MP, trying to doppelganger away, but doesn't get very far. Oh, now, the oh, micro. The, jukes, the micro? He is it enough? EG are still on the case. Arrow? Salving up the arrow! Yeah. It's a connection by our tour. No more mana. They got the right click, but And it crit. will be two quick and crucial kills for EG as they get these lanes started the way they'd like. Yep. I think they were banking on, like, let's get him low mid, we don't have to kill him, then Puppy can snipe the Courier when it ferries out regen. Mm. But, you know, none of that came together as they just turned around and got the kill themselves. Yeah. Invoker's move speed very poor at these early levels, especially when you're getting that early point in Quas. Are they just completely sacking the PL down there? Yapsor's not there to help him out. Not that he really can as a Rubik. And then Ricky is, you know, elsewhere doing Ricky things, so... It's, it seems like the lanes are as EG wants them. Yeah, sure, Universe is going to have a tough time, but he'll live. So any adjustments that you'd like to see out of Secret here, early Lumi? They can't think about a lane swap. 
uh, as we do see Yabsor picks up a, a decent one with Ricky. They, yeah, they, they can put the PL up top, but I think the whole lane swapping will cost a little bit of time. Um, I think it's just better to just rotate and help PL on, on the bottom. A big dive here as Universe has all kinds of napalm roasted by Kez. He will be finished off. By the way, in the mid lane, mid one is... Oh, hold that thought as they're diving Arteezy. Looking for the pick off here. They're going to lift him back. And, gets and they a kill. will kill yeah. them. So they strike back some important kills for Team Secret. For yeah, them. I think it's better just to make sure that PL gets farm. You put the support bottom. And I think you were just mentioning that we're going to see an EMP Tornado build coming out from Volker. I, he says, you know, he, he's been giving TI1 Dendi, Dendi. shoutouts, so now he's putting his money where his mouth is. I mean, TI1 Dendi didn't play Invoker, though. Yeah, that was TI2 Dendi, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> Change We've your tags, messed, man. We, Change your maybe, tags. Maybe in the new timeline. Okay. Know. Alternate timeline. Yeah, so... It is Quas Wex. He's just taking the second point of Wex, so no more questions about that. Well, I gotta say, EMP Tornado is gonna be quite good against your Elder Titans, your uh, Void, and more importantly, it allows you to fight much, much earlier. Now, the downside to that is, again, a very risky build, because you know with the Midas build up, uh, with the Exhort build, you just farm very fast. He being pressured here, bottom. Doppelganger won't get him away. Another pick off for EG, three to three. Early bloodbath emerging in this series. Yeah. So yeah, you were saying about the Quaswex build. Yeah, it allows you to fight a little bit earlier, allows you to rotate harder, faster. Um, but it does give up the early juicy Sunstrike kills that your team could set up for you. Yeah, they don't have the best Sunstreak setup. It's like Lift and then a Lance, I guess. Yeah. So, did one dodging away from the yep. stomp. But he is definitely under the gun. The other downside to this build is sometimes you struggle a bit to CS, mm. but he does have the early Null Tally. Uh, I'm actually doing okay, all things yeah. considered. One of the definitely very underrated aspect of the uh, Quas Exorp, sorry, Quas Wex build is that you get a lot more movement speed. When you're trying to dodge things away from like Echo Stomp, that is very nice. Looks like Zai was able to get cliffed by the Rubik. So he has handed a teleport scroll and he'll go home. And we're not going to see any shenanigans where someone's cliffed for like four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Puppy studied up shop in the top lane, wants to make a go. He drops the cloud on the right place. Universe does have the time wall cooling down and he will get it off. Backing away to safety, but still definitely struggling a lot in this top lane. That rider off to the races early. So yeah, looking forward a bit, Lumi, especially with this new Quaswex development, like how do you strategically view these two lineups, their different goals and objectives, and longer-term game plans once the laning stage breaks down? I think Secret, uh, especially with the Quaswex build, they're going to just run shop on the map, apply pressure, very similar to the playstyle of the last game. The, the danger I feel with the Team Secret is, where's your objective taking? I was just thinking the yeah, same Yeah, like thing. who's going to hit the buildings? There's a dive top lane, Universe. Five Napalm charges, and the pursuit continues. Kezu, though, is able to time walk back and away to safety. So didn't they... get that extra Napalm stack to yeah. keep them going. Was a bit slow on it. Could have been a kill. And this is the matchup where the Batrider sh needs to be winning. I know he's got the one kill already, but P PL's suffering on the bottom. He needs to give him the edge, and so far it's not looking like it's enough. Yeah, uh, obviously PL is not going to be the objective taker as an illusion hero, yeah. at least not a great one. So I'm, I'm struggling to find out what the role that PL is playing overall. He's so under farm that I don't know what he can contribute to Secret. He can contribute gold to EG. That's one <laughs> thing that is certainly possible for MP. It looks like he might be happy to get perfect chain stun. Immaculate coordination, really, as they will find that kill. Yep. Nice little shackle. Then into the arrow, followed up with the stomp all the while, damage raining, and they even got the extra star storm. So everything just really well executed there. They're gonna make their move on Sumail though. This is an opportunity. The cloud gets dropped, the MPs there, cutting him off, and boy, that really hurts for the Pugna. Quick, decisive takedown. Universe on the rotation. They're gonna find Puppy in the river. Will he be able to get out of here, fade away in time? Looks like he's just fine. Arrow. Coming in, not going to connect. Mid one, looking to retreat. The cloud gets dropped. They got to watch out for Zai. He's got like plus 100 damage because his spirit ran over four heroes. Puppy looks like he's going to have to walk around and finish that D ward. So I guess if you're going this build, you're definitely getting the, the XP gain talent, right? I, I got to. You have to, right? Unless he goes for an early Midas. 
Yeah, we'll that's, that is another big decision, I think, for Secret. Like, I I know when MP used to go Quaswex Invoker last TI, he would just get a mech. Because yeah. that was like MVP Phoenix, right? They just want to fight mid-game. Well, mech but, also costs cheaper than mana-wise. Right, back so then. that's true. So it's maybe less viable now, but, yeah. um, you know, I, I feel like a good way to kind of give them an insurance policy is he could go back for the Midas, even starting Quaswex. It doesn't seem like he will. And we're going to see yet another go on the mid lane. The clap is going to come through, though. Going to be two-man sleeping effect. Batrider on the back line is going to clean up the kill. The punishment for Sumail this game. This is secret anti-Pugna hate squad. Yeah. <laughs> and he ain't no Storm Spirit. He's not easily going to be able to come back in this one if he gets shut down early. Yeah, Pugna is one of the worst heroes to make any comeback. Yeah, you could, you know, hit the buildings a couple of times, but you need HP. He's already a very frail hero to begin with. Uh, and going back to the Midas discussion, it doesn't seem like mid one will go for it. He has a uh, earn. He could get it later, but yeah, he's definitely not rushing it. Yeah. And for those of you guys that haven't seen it, the, the cold snap plus urn is pretty juicy in terms of picking up kills solo. You know, you just cold snap, put an urn on them, and right click them. Already getting active has the arcane rune, which is especially useful when you have these long cooldown CC abilities. Now, a whole lot shorter. They're going to try to make the move on universe again with the cold snap. Yep. Support, kill secured, early roaming, early pressure, the name of the game for Team Secret. This and is buying space for MP bottom, Lumi. He's finally going to be given a little catch-up time as he begins to harass Crit. Yep. And this is really what the, the Ricky is picked for, right? Like, everywhere he goes, doing more than a Treant and a Bounty Counter can do. And it's, it's a grittier support duo, I guess. Like, in, like the Ricky, I guess, doesn't need levels or farm, but it's, it is really nice if you have it, and certainly the Rubik does. So yep. uh, having the slightly more selfless mid is very different for mid-1 from what we're accustomed to, but I think could synergize nicely with the rest of their lineup as he tries to finish off this tower top. One more Chrono. auto attack. He does get chronoed. Is there a good angle for an arrow? Arteezy threads the needle. Still though, will they kill mid one? Just one Tornado. more auto attack. Tornado. Go swap, swap. See ya, homies. Wait, clap. Okay. That regen though. <laughs> He's out of there. All right. That is the mid one we know. And yeah, we that's go. some TI2 Dendi stuff right there. Nicely done. But he is scanned. Oh. And he dodges the arrow. <laughs> okay. The god good. smile on him. Good, Somewhere Dendi beams with approval. All right. I, I still think that if you tag up TI1 Dendi, where's the pudge? Yeah. Where, where's the, uh, Didn't he the play mid ancient Nima? apparition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He also played Viper, I think. He basically played a bunch of heroes that he hated playing. Yeah, because disgusting. That, yeah, because, you know, the, the Dota 2 hero pool was like a quarter of the actual there was like, Dota 1 hero pool. At the there point. was like 20 heroes. Uh, there's more I think it 20. was like 40 yeah, something. But just... yeah. Oh god, every game was like anti-mage versus Spectre. <laughs> <laughs> but was we, a... we got that one of those two carries usually won, yeah, at least okay. in the early games. So Mail, gonna get brought down again. Mid one all over the place right now. He has the earn, we'll pop it on Zion. Look at how fast he goes, that tornado hits no one. But it was that was, a, that was a taunting tornado. I mean, make sure that nobody was coming. Yeah, down the see, look, line. I don't even need more tornado to kill you. All right, puppy, gonna go right on Arteezy, but he's gonna go. So this uh, mid one tor mid one invoker though, it's he's going into four staff. He's going to full. Hey, I'm gonna just take over this game right now. Uh, I know you got this mid late game scaling with the Mirana, with the Void. I don't care. I'm gonna just beat you. I actually, I think four staff this game is pretty good against EG because they have. Uh, aside from the Chronosphere, you have, you know, like that stomp into arrow setup that you really oh. don't want someone to get comboed with as they make their move on the mid lane and yes, simultaneously action also happening top. Arteezy being roasted in the flames, he'll go down, but mid one's in trouble here. He ghost walks away, they came prepared with dust this time. Defe uh, the Decrepify comes out trying to get them the distance they need. Now they're giving him the suck, but he's got too much regen. He earned himself up. He's, he's so fast, fast with dude. With a triple cross, he's got 24 HP regen a second, and they just can't kill him. Mid one, swagging on EG. Can't touch this, he says. EG are committed, though. They really want to take this tower down, but no Chronosphere available. It's about to cool down, so Secret have to be wary. They do have a stolen time walk maxed out for Yapsor to work with. Fantastic spell to be a nuisance in these fights, but one more blast is going to do this tower, and it is in deny range now if they want to delete it, but it's a crucial tower at the same time as Crit. Overstaying his welcome, gets cut off. Flame Break, going to push him back just a little, and Kezu shows him the love. Make a kill streak for him. While we've been talking so much about this Quaswex Invoker, I know we did highlight it a bit early, but Kezu has been wrecking the top lane. He is on a mega kill streak, drums complete, blink almost ready. 
that man's about to get out of control. Yep, that's for sure. He's got the bottle as well, which is not something you see too often from an offlane Batrider, but the bottle was very important and allowed him to pick up more kill. Mid lane, EMP Tornado flying off. Zai is going to eat it all out of mana. He's going to go down. He pops a magic wand, but on the back line, delivery here from Kezu grabbing Sumail. Sumail trying to turn around. Nice ultimate here from Universe. Gets it stolen here. Yapsor's got a chrono. Is he going to chrono help his buddy out? No. Looks like he's gonna go down regardless. Meow Kezu trying to run out. The fire not doing enough on the back line. Kezu, make it home, my friend. He has two bottle charges. They still have Chrono. He will use it. Void just walks through it. My flavor, my immersion, not gonna work here. Universe jumps back. A lot of spells being thrown, but the most important kill is a mid one going down. This is already feeling like a game of memories. And yeah, remember the old Rubik when he could Chrono Void and lock him in place? Yeah. Those were beautiful days. A simpler time when prize pools were 2 million instead of 23. Or one. And, or one. Yeah. <laughs> and we played for love of the game. And, eh, and there was some money at stake for the players. But, yeah, this has been a crazy back and forth game. As far as tempo goes, Lumi, uh, it is to me still very much the tempo secret wants to be playing. They're fighting constantly. They're not letting EG group up, drop wards, start blasting towers. They're kind of dismantling that push before it gets underway. And yep. I think it's important they continue that. If they let EG set up on a tower, that tower is basically dead. So I like the way they're approaching it, and they have to find ways to continue doing that. Yeah, also, the tower uh, is so important for heroes like Marana and Void, which don't really scale that well unless you pick up two to three items on them. And preventing the towers from even going down in the first place is, you know, you just you just cut the beast at his legs before he even gets online. Um, I know we talked about a lot about the Invoker already, but just a little bit more. Remember that mid gank where three of them were chasing mid one and he just ran away? I, I guess people just forgot how quick this hero moves when you have face boots and wex. It's moving over 440 MS. I mean, the old build was literally race car, where you'd also yeah, yeah. have drums as well as Yule's. Nice yeah. pickoff in the bottom lane by Crit, but mid one is making a play on Arteezy here up top as the MP gets dropped. Arteezy tries to leap away into the trees. It the will MP, connect though. with the tornado crashing through. Arteezy might be done for. He hits the tower once. Not ideal. No Arteezy way. low, but committing for this and bat bailing out his buddy is MP. They'll get the kill. Zai on the chase. Stomp's only going to hit MP. Probably not a possible kill. In fact, meanwhile, Universe is being hounded. Do they want to commit for this? They do. Lasso coming in. Tricks of the trade deployed. Mid one's there. Pumping in the damage. The flame oh. He manages to walk it up, but still the cold snaps keep on coming. The urn is there. Big commitment. Lance will end that void and set him back a notch as they do get the bat right at the end of streak. They also clean a puppy over extension from secret. Costly deaths. Make it a triple kill for Sumail. Maybe more. Well, I said he couldn't come back on the bug though the way he could on Storm, but Sumail might just be proving me wrong here. Veil complete now, working towards the Arcane Boots. This is the second time that the Invoker has died, and this is a big point to talk about because when you run this kind of aggressive strategy, you need to be in the jungle, you need to be applying pressure, and you need to not die. Your level's already suffering a little bit because you're clumping up so much and fighting so often. And uh, mid one, if he dies one to two more times, I think he is gonna forgo a lot of that mid-game superiority because he already doesn't have the Midas. He needs to be getting kills and not dying to supplement what an Invoker can normally do at this stage of the game. They know this is a good time to make a go on Universe, though, as there is no Chrono available. They have the ward behind the tower, and the whole team is trucking up that way. Kezu and Yapsor about to join their mid player. EG seem to realize they something know. isn't right, yeah. but they're also just forfeiting the tower freely. So for it a team that's not that good at taking objectives, this is a free one being gifted to them. It's a slow one too. Like there's no Forge Spirits, there's no Alacrity, so it's so gonna It's take... slow, but what is EG doing? They're not trading, right? They're not They're not going for objectives of their own right now. Yeah, you're right. Marana's doing a little bit of split pushing, but Marana is, like, look at his farm. He's got a ring of health. He's trying to go into Lincoln's. This Marana is a glorified range creep. Arteezy's gonna get lifted. Starstorm stolen here. Down to half HP already, and looks like he is going to get easily brought down. Universe is there, though. He doesn't have the Chrono. That could end up costing them. Managing to get out of the tricks of the trade. Universe Arteezy may still die, though, to this urn. Ticks him low. Won't finish him off. The wards got planted, but to little avail. Now the Bash is starting to come through, but Puppy dropping that defensive cloud. He doesn't quite die to the Blast. And on the other side of the fight, they've wrangled and crit. They're going to pick him off. Now, somehow, EG have to back away. And oh, even that after that commitment. 
They're just going to get the wards farmed up. Yeah, MP cleans out all of them. Around 200 gold here for the PL. And, that's, and that engagement is the reason why we saw mid one picked up the four staff. Crit started off very nicely with the ward trap on the invoker and a shackle. But at the end of that, he just four staff out. He can also phase out, you know, either way. But now mid one is on the hunt. Ghost walk, cold snap, and urn at the ready. They do have chrono now. Gotta be careful, they're leading with mid one. This could be precarious. EG sporting out, or sorry, Universe ports out. If Universe shows mid, they know that the chrono is not available. And yeah, the rest of EG backs off in time. Universe is not here, can't fight. A big power spike now for Secret as that Diffusal Blade is complete on MP against a Pugna. This makes him extremely vulnerable. No defensive decrepifies to save you if the PL has been brought to bear. They're going to cluster up near this tower. AG, they want to defend as a squad. They are strong in numbers if they hit their combo, but so much combo breaking potential and the meanwhile for secret here comes the smoke crit going for the d ward on the side lurks the ricky trying to find that opening to start the fight but they want to lure eg away from this tower crit marches down to low ground still backing off secret playing it safe respecting the eg5 man yeah they're, they're giving so much credit to the chronos here like they crit was so far away from Void. I, I think they, they are also down a lasso right now for secret, so perhaps waiting for that. It I think the invoker. Ready. I think the invoker and Ricky could just kill on their own. Look at the investment that's been made by EG in these sentries, and still one is going to get caught here. The, the Crapify comes out. They don't have the PL in position, so Crit stays alive a bit longer. Yaps are coming in, looking for the pickoff, and now the Bat Riders found another on the other side of the fight, trying to drag him Shackle. back, focus him down. Flame breaks there, roast him in the flames, and he will come out charred and finished. Well done, EG. Losing to Secret. Again, getting the big picks. Lumi, the support tax. I want to talk about that. Look <laughs> at the net worth of the Shadow Shaman and the Elder Titan right now. Compare that to the Batrider and the Sand King last game. All the sentries they've had to buy, all the towers they've lost early. These Invid's heroes are really punishing them. When you say support tax, I thought, you know, they're taking CS, but this is the bad kind of support tax. <laughs> this is the kind where the, the supports are being taxed. Yeah, for sure. You can see 1,100 gold spent by Zai on yep. support items. So a lot of those are sentries. Or dust, yeah. yeah sentries they got to be dust. pretty prepared, uh, not just for the Ricky, but the Ghost Walk that's constantly being spammed out here by Mr. Invoker. MP almost getting the solo kill on Zai. Couldn't quite finish him off. Rest of Secret smoked up on the hunt again here. They Secret. They expect him to walk high ground. They're ready for this. Puppy's in position once again. Universe also. Catch him off. And Yapso's there. He gets the lift early on the void. Then the silence comes out. Beautiful position on the cloud with the EMP connection. He won't even have the mana for the chrono. He's got a time walk away and reset the fight. They're already down a shaman. Secret have just been so disruptive. Like the area control this team has between EMP, the Ricky cloud. It's so hard, it's even tricks of the trade, it's so hard to find an opening to yeah. get that big combo off. He needs to come in from the fog and not get initiated on. EG is counting on Universe to deliver big. We saw what the Chrono can do in the fight uh, in the top jungle. It can turn a fight and gave Sumail a triple kill in that fight. But he also, I, I think this might be one of those games that you either build a Shadow Blade or a Blink. Just to, like you're just a Chrono machine for your team. And it looks like he's going to go for the Shadow Blade option. Also, I like to see Yapsor keep that ultimate that he stole from Crit. That is the one pushing advantage that he could get from the Shaman ult. Yeah, well, we wondered how much Yapsor would be able to steal, and as usual, he has not disappointed. Universe coming in from the side. Kezu has the, oh, didn't get the lasso off, but now could be in trouble. The Veil comes out, the Tornado's off the mark, the Life Drain, Ooh. almost finishing him. Universe commits the Chrono, he actually gets three with it. It looked like it would only be one, oh. and barely, and now, the pain as the Earth Splitter really punishes them. They do steal the Chrono, but there's not a whole lot of damage to pump into it. And actually, MP was caught within. He'll drop four dead. The lone survivor to tell their tale is Yapsor. I, I, I don't know if he just wanted to Chrono for the solo kill, but the fact that he got two more and Zai just let his ult rip. That was, that was a beauty. It's hard to get off that combo, but when you do, it is devastating. We're going to see it one more time. Kezu wanting to get the initiate. Look at the range that Sumel was able to bring. And all oh, that chrono. And that was it. That was the fight. Yeah. Fight right there. Our splitter. Devastating, obviously, as the follow-up. Yep. And also because the Rubik stole the chrono, uh, he gave up the Serpent Wards, which is 
I think a very decent spell to have uh, just for stealing uh, or pushing and stuff. Well, this time he will find one, but can they finish him off? Zai caught out, Flame Break pushes him back. Elder Titan down, so a nice pick for Team Secret. Yep. If they try to reestablish control. I I think you do look at that fight, the Tornado missed, the Batrider did not get a clean initiation with the lasso off, the PL wasn't even able to get into the back lines early, like that was just not the way Secret want to be approaching these fights. This is more like it, ideally, the Cloud comes down late by Puppy though, Tornado's there, but the tower is still up, even with Tricks of the Trade, they can look to turn this around potentially, RTZ not quite finished off, Puppy now wants to get the hell away, and he will leap from low ground up high, back to mid one and back to safety. Yeah. But something you did bring up about mid one though, Lumi. The net worth is starting to slip a little bit. Down to 6.5k. Very so, easy for a Quaswex Invoker to fall behind. So often you're used to seeing an Invoker just being a number one. Pretty much throughout the whole game, right? Or an extremely high level. His level is actually very low as well. Crit on the mid lane is going to get focused down, but the clap is going to be there as well. It gets both. Puppy's going to eat the first spell. The Earth Splitter is going to come through full staff defensively. But is there Chrono Sphere available? No, but it doesn't seem like they need it. Mid one's going to get right clear. The Kreb actually helping him a little bit. Doesn't matter. EG just runs him down. And I do believe Secret is running out of steam. I did mention that Invoker can't die more than two, three times. He has since I made that mark. And I'm uh, getting a little scared here for Secret. Yeah, the question is who's going to carry the game? You have a PL, but there's so much area control and so much AoE to punish the illusions, like the Echo Stomp, Spirit Combo, the Pugna Blast. Uh, unless this PL is six slotted, all his illusions are going to melt. Uh, so if the fight is misplayed by EG or the ults have been expended, then perhaps MP can clean up. But it doesn't feel like the type of game where a PL can 1v5, which means the rest of the team will need to step up, and so far, just getting a little sloppy. They were not all together there, and now MP, speaking of which, he gets caught out. EG smoke, and he reveals it. The blink was on, put on cooldown instantly. Yep. Another pick off there. And now Secret's still moving in, wanting to make something happen, but the Chrono's online. If they overextend here, they could easily lose more. They are definitely getting a bit discombobulated as the game moves along. Running in one by one, getting picked off one by one, not feeling like a well-oiled machine the way they were earlier in the game. Again, very similar to, to the game one story. I think their lineup is harder to execute. They need to win a lot of engagements. They can't afford to make too many mistakes. And they have been making a lot of mistakes. Also, I do want to point out that, the, like you mentioned, the PL did go for the Blink Dagger. This is a build that you go for when you're looking to play a high-tempo game. You look to assassinate the back lines. Pugna is a free kill. Crit is a free kill. And perhaps even Mirana could be a free kill at, at this point in the game. But that's assuming that your team is actually, you know, taking the fights to them. So EG did go for double Glimmer Cape, interestingly. Okay. Uh, looking at Secret... It's a lot of magic damage, especially with the Quaswex Invoker, the Bat Rider. Yep. Uh, do you do you like this particular adjustment? It's kind of rare to see two of these this early. I do because it's basically Secret lives and dies by getting kills. They're not a good. They're not good at sieging. They're not good at taking Roshan. So the only way that they start anything going for Secret is starting with a kill. And Glimmer Cape to me is probably the second best defensive item next to Force Staff to, you know, prevent things from, from getting done. I am surprised there, there isn't more four Staff, because four Staff doubles up as a way to get out of that smoke pile as well. I mean, you could get Glimmer, but you're still, like, losing all your mana to the EMP, you're still getting Cold Snap and all that jazz, and it does cost a ton of mana, whereas four Staff is just an, like an ultra-free, safe, get-out-of-jail-free card. The only thing that it doesn't work against is the Flaming Lasso, so perhaps that is the reason why we see double Glimmer and not as many Force. I will say, I suppose the, the good news for Secret is while they're not really going greedy with any of their items, neither is EG. Like, Sumail's gone for a Blink Dagger. You know, we saw, I would say, a greedier build for the Pugna is the early BOTs. We saw oh, no, that. this is just his build. He, right. he goes for this build all the time. It's right. uh, Veil. It's, so it's not, it's not a greedy build. Right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Mirana is going Lincoln's, which is also not greedy. The Void went for an early Vlad. There's no Midas's on this team. There's no early Marana Ags. There's no BOTs on the Pugda. So sure, you know, Secret isn't playing greedy or angling for late game, but neither is EG. So I think yeah. that does extend the window where your know, Secret can still be competitive. It's not like one loss fight suddenly means they're going to be getting lapped in the net worth department.
Here comes the smoke. Secret grouping up. Sitting Looking to make out. their move. Sitting in reserve is Zai, and farther back is Universe, but the lasso comes through to start the fight. Quickly hexing and controlling him, now preventing the follow-up with the Echo Stomp, trying to keep that Bat Rider isolated from his team. They do decrep and drain him, forcing him on his heels. The Moonlight Shadow was committed, and now they drop the wards. They really want to force this. However, Yapsor steals those wards right back. Second time he's done it this game. Crit gotta not give away that ward. He wanted to, like, other shock something, I think, right there after. Was there, there, was, shock, there was nothing to shock. There was nothing in raid. Yeah. yeah. To me, though, like, that fight where nothing happened, I think in big broad theory, that's still EG favored. Like, they're okay with nothing. I think it's secret there. They stole wards, you know? Okay, so, well, okay. Yeah, a sure, one minute sure. cooldown, right? So. I, I am surprised that crit dropped it, because I don't think he was going to get the tower regardless. But... So it is a heart being queued up by MP. Wants to try and live through the burst. Interesting pickup here from the PL. More often we'll see like the Yasha, maybe the BOTs. Uh, yeah, his row with the blink and the heart is just get on the back line and be a huge MP nuisance. On the smoke, they look for Kezu here. Tries to get away, the blink's available. Leaps out, now Yapsor and mid one also needing to retreat. But yep. Universe is looking to cut them off, shadow blading forward. Doesn't want to overcommit as Secret simultaneously looking for a flank of their own in the mid lane, e.g. quickly caravan back. I, I like to see uh, Invoker finishes Rod of Atos before the next fight, because one of the big problems they have right now is keeping the person locked down under the smoke cloud. And it's, you know, we see the lift coming in, but Marana just walks out and then leap. Same thing with the Void walks out and then time walk. The, the Rod of Ato is the ultimate, hey, I'm going to kill you under the cloud, and nobody's itemizing against it. I talked about the lack of four oh, staff. Puffy. Ricky gets the pick off. Do they have dust? They do. They now have the chrono. The chrono so. Simmel walks into it. Heavy commitment, but hey, Puffy got a courier. He forces out a chrono. There you go. That's Puffy's 10% right there. I think he's up his rates. That's probably more like 30. <laughs> Big team fight alt and the courier, not too shabby. Serpent Ward takes out the building. I agree with your point about the Atos. However, EG are going for triple BKB now, it looks like. Oh, okay. Hold that thought as the Shaman is going to get jumped. Lifted, pulled back. No Glimmer Capes to save you this time. Crit dies in a hail of spears. But yeah, you've got a BKB under construction. Actually, more team fight action breaking out as the lasso comes through. Dragging in Sumail, pulling him deep behind enemy lines. He will die in the flames, burning to bits. And now MP gets in, but he's taking too much damage here. He has Tornado. to back away. He's blown up by the punching action of Zai. Zai will die in turn. Still a three for one. An overall savage victory for Seeker. Tower taken, courier snipe, three heroes dead with the chrono blown. They're very happy with this exchange. Yeah, but normally you'd be like, Secret, let's go Roche. Let's take it tier two. But again, this lineup, they're just slow at doing everything. Finally, Alacrity is online with two points into Exhort. You can start getting something done, but... Sorry, I was he cutting is... you off making a point. Yeah, well, he, has, he also has not taken any, any of his talent. talents yeah. yet. That's interesting. Yeah, you were mentioning the plus 30% experience game. Evidently, he doesn't think it's important. I think when you're building for the uh, Quas Wex build, every point of Quas and Wex is so important. So it does make sense that he doesn't go into it. Some Invoker players, uh, even when they're going Zord, does not like to take talents. Yeah, I'm curious to see what the build is from here. He goes back for a BKB now in terms of items. Okay. So it, it's still very mid-game focused. The BKB is for the Echo Stomp. So many of these team fights, Zai has been such a big nuisance. As well as just the pugs and the damage. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of a lot he can pump out there. He's got the Atos already. Here oh, we go. Ricky Illusion coming in. It's hexed. The hexed and dealt with. Now Puppy, his real hero. Position. Crit does have a single sentry. Blinking out, getting nervous. He will jump away, but the dust is there. Puppy into the tricks of the trade. Quickly ends it, drops the clown. Looks to retreat. They veil him up. They will commit with the Decrepify here, but Sumail can't keep the vision as it is nighttime. Now Kezu, oh, he's jumping, but the Lincolns comes through. A clutch play from Arteezy just in the next That time. reaction, man. That is not a Lincolns on Sumail. That's Arteezy giving it to him. Oh. Now the wards get dropped. Blast comes through. Rubik with only the Aether Shock stolen was not in position for the ward grab. Nice little play there. 
But yeah, they're going mass BKB was the point I wanted to make yes. earlier. And against that, that is the counter to Smoke Cloud. At that point, the Cloud does absolutely nothing. So that is for sure. I think that's going to be a, a stage of the game where uh, there's a real concern. As I say that, Universe has changed his build since then. It's only the Pugna going for it. But I also think the Pugna is the hero that's most affected by it. They still have Lincolns as a one way. You know, the projectile of the Atos is fairly fast, but like we saw from RTZ just now, this guy has the reaction to definitely, you know, pop or to help his allies to, to play against the, the Raw of Atos. I, I know, David Gorman, you'd like to say that Dota is a game of inches. My, my personal phrase for that is that oh, Dota puppy. is. Another courier snipe coming. All right, he's going to get it. There you go. I think Dota is a game of timings. And yes, I do agree with you that BKB eventually will, will counter the Rod of Atos. The fact of the matter is that they don't have it now. And that means Team Secret has a timing window to actually make something happen. For now though, they are playing defensively as EG is finally executing the Pugna game plan. Just blasting buildings. It's time the Lincoln's given to him preemptively <laughs> rather than going for the swag plays. It will slowly work this tower down. EG on the offense. Where does Secret look to make the move? They're going to smoke up. Puppy out in front. And they plunge forward. Kezu has the BOTs picked up now. That's his big additional grab. And now a bit of dewarding happening as MP cleaned a few up. They do have a gem to deal with that Moonlight Shadow. Kezu looks for the opening here. Moving towards the Roche Pit. Not easy for the squad to take. Secret are just not very good at objectives, be it Towers or be it Roche. Because he flanks around, he sees EG, but does he dare leap? Arteezy's nearby as well. Arrow gives away the fact that the jungle has been invaded. Both team smokes not connecting. And I think we are getting to a stage of the game where we really have to worry about the scaling of Team Secret. I mean, Invoker is slowly working towards 25, so eventually he is going to be the Invoker that we know and love. But no Aghanim Scepter, no Hanum Vitus to accelerate there. At the same time, EG is not really scaling all that quickly either, yeah. like we talked about before. Only now does Arteezy get his first farming item. Yeah, now he, he'll start accelerating. Now I think the game is... St universe, he's not going for like that no-tail battle fury that we see once in a while. Yeah. It's, it's just not going to be... No. This is not going to be a game where heroes are super farmed. If they get super farmed, it's because they're they're slaying a lot of pools. You know, they're cracking up the kills. <laughs> so you're saying this is a game where the, the counter, the, the minute counter will be very high, like 45, 50, 60 minute games. But relatively, they're going to be hitting like kittens as opposed to you know, yes. giant but bears. But the things they're hitting are also kittens. So. <laughs> okay. While a kitten can't kill a full grown cat, a kitten might be able to kill another kitten. No, let's not get too graphic here. <laughs> That's not our all material. Smoke coming out again here from Crit. He's dropping some wards. Seems like EG is having some thoughts about Roshan down the line. This is generally a ward that you want to place to take the tier one top and uh, secure Roshan or CTPs coming in uh, on that shrine. EG went for the smoke. They get the ward down. They are setting up shop here on the top side of the map, and there is still a tier one to be grabbed. Last hit, going to the Dire. Meanwhile, MP trying to push through mid. They're looking for a bit of a reply on the secret end. The heart's complete now, the BOTs are coming soon. Whacking away at that tier two, and it looks like this will be uncontested. Wards get the point as well, so EG, Again, content not to take by Universe found a trap two chronoed out on the south side. This could be real bad, including mid one. He goes splat as the Earth Splitter cuts him off at the knees and does not even have the buyback. Just like that, a huge opening. Puppy continues to take his tax, I believe, as the Radiant Courier. Uh, sorry, actually, this time uh, the Radiant Courier goes down. Never mind that. So EG even getting a little bonus on top of it. The mid push did continue. There was about a third damage done to the tier three, but not really enough. Oh, as they find MP, try to retreat. Hex up to start, shackles to follow. They're gonna need a lot of bashes here to bring him down. The arrow comes in from downtown. It's a connection by Arteezy. Kezu's there to interrupt. The cloud gets deployed. They try desperately to keep MP in fighting shape. Sumail committee that BKB manages to jump away. MP gets the blink off in the nick of time. The Decrepify may have actually helped to save him there. They aren't able to find that additional bonus and salvage for Secret by MP Split Push. So, I want to point out that Puppy, throughout that engagement, had a 
gem, right? He had a gem. They stood right on top of the sentry. They thought they were safe because yeah, sentry is there, but they had a war they had a high ground ward here, giving the vision to the sentry, and then universe says, okay, yeah, I'm gonna come in. They were hoping to bait EG, thinking they didn't have vision, and instead EG were able to punish them as yep. they did. And then two man chrono. Oh, I'm not in the lobby. You guys can't see the arrows I'm drawing. Probably for the best. Yeah. I was like rapidly pinging that. I sentry. saw. I saw some very. Uh, Family unfriendly drawings there earlier, Lumi. That wasn't me. Shame dude. on you. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> Slander. But uh just yeah. because Bulldog isn't here doesn't mean that you know you have to go to that Man, level. That that play where they stood on top of Sentry with a gem might have cost them I, I don't want to say the game or anything, but they just they gave up a lot. The tier two top, a lot of their momentum. They still retain the gem, which is the important part because map control overall is still on the side of Team Secret. But now EG do they have any smokes left? I feel like both teams are, are smoking very heavily. Crit has one in his backpack, and I think they are about to deploy it soon, after they pushed out this mid lane. Secret are going to try for this Roche, but it is going to be slow going. Man, I have not seen an Invoker's farm drop off a cliff like this in a long time. He is now the least farmed core. He's actually being out farmed by his own Rubik. Yapsor just completed an Ag, so... Support Invoker as this game goes late. Yep. Is likely what you can expect to see. There are some sick axe ult you could steal in this game. But hold that thought here as RTZ jumps away. Um, the big one here is the Mass Serpent Wards, as you do get the attack range upgrade. Hold so up. they find the opening, trying to drag back in and isolate the Faceless Void. The Sunstrike comes in, artillery from on high, and they will kill off Universe. Now the opening, this is what Secret needs. They can chase, they can dive, there's no buyback on Universe. Zai gets overwhelmed, slashed to death by the Illusions, and now the Roshan can slowly, slowly be worked on. Yeah. Do they have any stolen wards here by any chance? Nope. That would certainly be nice. No. Rubik stole the Echo Stomp and used that right back his eye. Oh, yeah. Looks like a gem was dropped somewhere. Anyway, so I was, I was talking about some of the Axe upgraded uh, ultimate that Yapsurga steal. Master Boom Ward is a big one. It really gives a huge upgrade to the damage that uh, it does during team fights. Um, of course, if you steal Star Storm and you have Axe, you do have the extra double Star Storm. And of course, uh, you do have the zero cooldown life drain from, from Pugna as well. So some, some decent one, but ultimately uh, the big benefit of the Axe Scepter pickup is the long, long cast range of Spell Seal, as well as a two second cooldown on it. So one of the best Aghanim Scepter upgrade in the whole game. And yep, sorry, I feel like has won the majority of his Pugna games. Or uh, sorry, not Pugna yeah. games. Um, I was looking at Sumail while I said that, but Rubik games. So somehow he always finds that farm. Can Rubik carry? That will be a big question because PL in theory can do a lot if there's no void, if like the Elder Titan doesn't, but there's a lot of ifs surrounding how much hitting the PL is going to be doing and how much you know, running for dear life slash just being chain stunned will be happening. I think we're getting to a point where the PL is becoming relatively difficult to kill. If he's surrounded by the whole team, yeah, MP will still die, but as see, we see in the past, the heart has been doing quite a bit. Uh, we're 40 minutes in. You know, is is has your evaluation of the game changed at all? Does EG still take this late game? Do, is Secret able to win at 60, 70 minutes? You know, I've been focusing a lot on the fact that the Invoker hasn't been scaling well, but I'm also, you know, not remembering that Pugna doesn't do amazingly in the late game. You know, this is where we see Pugna also start to fall off. I think this game is just relatively difficult to evaluate because <laughs> we're introduced to so many different factors at the same time. Um, I think it's fairly even now that I think more and more about it into the mid and late game. What is the apps are going to steal? All eyes fixed on the young upstart. Even just stealing the Pugna Blast would be huge here. Sure. All of a sudden, they have the push. But everybody on EG has to be careful. And it's pretty hard to protect that blast, I gotta say. I mean, you, you can only be spamming Decrepify in the Plague Ward. Or, uh, sorry, the Nether Ward so much. You gotta be careful. Crit is thinking about, you know, moving forward, ether shocking and dropping the ward, and all of a sudden you, you gotta come back to defend. It's a big part of EG's team fight. They are rather light in the damage department. Mjolnir is complete on Arteezy, so maybe decent from him, but that's largely it. No Diffusal Blade on Void, no Manta ready yet. Pugna can dish out a lot. 
crit moves forward. Unfortunately, he couldn't get the Aftershock Zap on the range creep as well, so... Yeah, he, he just gives up the push. At the same time, if unless Secret want to commit real heroes, they are not going to bring buildings down quickly either. Yep. Let's find a way to steal that blast. We talked about the Mjolnir in, uh, on, on our TZ. Very easy for MP to just use the Diffusal Blade charge to break off the, the Lightning Shield. So I'm not sure how, how much uh, they could rely on that either. Slow and steady. Although it might be a lull, they're going to make their move now. Decisively jumping on the top lane, trying to isolate Arteezy. Finish him off, they get the last of Sunstrike comes in for that little bit of act, added assist. And Arteezy falls, does have buyback, down for 80. Forcing it would be huge. And they have the Aegis, so they're likely to try. Yasha was complete on MP, ramping up his items a bit. The Manta about to come online. The lanes are mostly shoving in Secret's way. Rubik right now with the stolen leap can be a nice way to set up for another spell steal. Give your team that extra bit of attack speed. Yep. Push on in. See okay. if Yapsar wants to lend that assist. They're pushing multiple lanes at once. Invoker with Alacrity going mid. Top lane looks like the Shackle has happened, but MP very tanky with a heart. Chronosphere being spent on the mid lane. They want to get him dead. Oh no! Ricky walked into the Chrono Earth. Spirit's gonna use mid one. Gonna go down. Puppy's gonna get caught as well. He'll pop his ultimate on the back line. MP jumps in, assassinates the crit. And he goes down. With the, some of the big ults expended, still no sign of a buyback from Arteezy. And now he's done it. He's stolen the Nether Blast. Towers are going to start melting. Yapsor, he's the siege engine. He's the team fight. He's the carry now. MP is just the beef in the front line. Structures are the name of the game, and Secret are making short work of them with this particular grab. EG on the ropes. Soon to lose their first melee. They've got to find a way to answer back. Good doppelganger back. Yapsor continues to chip, continues to prod. Now down to a third HP, but they do get a bash here at MP. How much do they want to commit? He's still got Aegis. Time's running low. Arteezy jumps in. They really want to crack that Aegis once without committing too much. And then on round two, come back and really throw everything they have at him. But Yapsor, he gets back to safety. He's stolen the time walk. Universe is diving deep for this commitment, <laughs> but Yapsor is already zipping away to freedom. Everyone on EG scrambling after this pesky Grand Magus, but he keeps on He's got running. Blink. He's got Blink. The escape, the running, it just keeps on giving. EG cannot cage the Yap God. Yo, they're coming back in right now. The universe is trying to jump away. He does have to last, last on the back line. They find one, and they're going to try to bring him down. Here comes Yapsor again. He's going to go right in. Lots of damage output. They take down two immediately. Arteezy also in trouble. I believe he has Leap. He will use a Tornado coming in from downtown. Arteezy gets purged. Arteezy losing out of Savannah. Arteezy goes down. Oh. Zai's on the run. He's got the Glimmer Cape. Do they have any detection? Oh, they stole the wards! Crit wanted to go for the Shackle. He didn't have the range on it. And now the base is really in trouble. If Yap can just blink in, pop those wards down with the PL. Oh, you bet he will. Secret is going to take a lane. Maybe two. Mid is low enough that perhaps he wants to save it for top. Let's see where he goes. Yeah, he's heading. Oh, he's thinking. He's yeah, thinking. Uh, oh. He's thinking. Drop, they're dropping mid, I think. Waiting for creeps. Wait, there's no. Waiting for creeps. Back of protection. Secret, <laughs> you can lane. feel the tension. They're like, get the Rex now. Get the Rex now. There's no buyback on Void, but the M creeps are slow. They need to leap them forward. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> they waited out. MP has a hard regen, so he doesn't care too much. Yapsor still thinking about it. Now he pings out top. He wants top as well. Okay, he's gonna I think drop the ward. They're going for the two for. They're yeah, gonna yeah, leave yeah. the PL mid. He'll take the melee there. Oh, man, look at these they wards. They drop the wards for the tier three. They kill off the creep wave. Some of them punishing the shrine as well. And still that melee has not fallen yet, but the tower's down. Mid one going to work on the melee top. Two lanes of racks, the two prone assault, and secret keep on thwacking away. The PL gets one melee down. Now the second to fall. Yapsor and squad have done it. Great dodge. No, actually the sleep is uh -oh. gonna catch him. MP though able the to The arrow, the arrow caught mid one in the back line. Are they gonna capitalize on that? They need a lot more. The Chrono comes through, but instantly stolen, lifted, and interrupted. Still, the Air Splitter connects all the same. So they'll have to save that Chrono for a rainy day, but victory for Secret here. Two Lades of Rex down. EG Blue Chrono defensively. Very little chance of a trade. Yep. They got Chrono, but they did give up the gem. Keep that Ricky did hold it for a long, long time. Finally, he does die. A huge, huge pick off here by Team Secret. The fact that they chase so hard for Yapsor, the entirety of EG was very split apart. They used most of their like chasing tools, like Leap, Time Walk, all that stuff, and then Secret turned on them. 
And are we going to watch the turn yet? This is going to be the turn where Universe tries to jump over. That was the very away. end of the chase when they gave up on diving Yapsor. And look how far away from the base they are. That also means the Shaman's not in position to help. Yep. Secret played that so well. And of course, you know, Yapsor in particular really came up clutch. And then he eventually is able to steal the the, play, the Rubik the Serpent Wards. Serpent yeah. Wards. Yeah. Uh, the Shaman Serpent Wards, I should say. Rubik Serpent Wards. Yeah. Let's, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's be real here for a second. All so right. when's when when is that Rubik Arcana coming, Bruno? I mean, at this point, we we don't know who wins. Are you disappointed though if it's gonna be a punch? I mean, I lo like you. Yeah, I also I, love both I, heroes. I, I but... think they're both super fun. So. Just saying. I think this is one of the times where I know so many people went 24 and 24 on the votes. They're like, yeah. Well, let's get back in the game. What can EG do now? There, it seems like they'll be charging bottom. They're, maybe they just want to take a Hail Mary fight to okay, get a rest. there, though, to reveal this. Yeah, he does get caught out. Hexed initially. The BKB lasso coming through. Good connection. Do they have the follow-up damage? Pumping it in from the side. Mid one tries to get the job done. Still the Rubik, though, with the stolen Chrono. Trying to get in position to set things up. He drops Chrono. it, and Crit walks into it. It's a triple catch by Yap, but they don't have the follow-up quite. It looks like they're lacking detection during this time. Can they get the kills? They ri rush forward onto Crit. Looks like Pale should be able to finish him up. Hexed up won't matter. Zai now surrounded and being dealt with by two. Yap stays alive with the Yules. The blink out still keeps on giving. The spirit comes back. Oh, 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 and finally, Zai finally kills. That goddamn Magus, but the Yules is there. TP interrupted, Tornado, and revenge for Secret. Four. Four down. No buyback on RTZ. No buyback on Zai. He got Yapsor, but was it worth it? The funny thing in that team fight was that Ricky was ushered away in the beginning of the fight. So, you know, they got a three-man chrono, but they didn't have too much vision because Moonlight Shadow was going. And then Yapsor stole Moonlight Shadow, and then the exact same thing happened on the other side. You had a team fight, 50 minutes in the game, and nobody could see each other because of Moonlight Shadow on both sides. But it doesn't matter now. Invoker, level 21, does have the full array of Alacrity as well as Forge Spirit starting to work on the tower. But now they will go back, respecting the buyback of EG. Yeah, he, he recognizes at this point just anything they can use to help assist the Siege safely is going to be a big boon for the team. So he takes that second talent at 50 minutes into the game. But it's a great one. Extra Forge Spirit will make sure. it safer to chip away. And the beauty... Butter and Butterfly is almost done on MP, so he's going to be hitting a lot harder as well. And the beauty of this quote-unquote skill build is that you get a talent every level. Oh, feels good. Next time he levels up, save it's like saving all the, you know, the best parts of the meal for last. Yeah. All right. Uh, Get all your veggies stuff. out of the way, and then the, the burger. Away. Oh, that's the that's the best part for me. I love the veggies. That that's I guess I'm a not a normal kid. That's why I'm casting Dota right now. <laughs> I I don't think there are too many Dota players that love the veggies, but I could be wrong. All right, we got a double damage rune right in front. Veggies esports. They need it. They need it. Take that DD right now. Yeah, because a new rune spawns. Okay, well, anyways, Secret should be able to get this Aegis, but Crit is coming here to scout and get scouted by a Ricky Illusion. Can they contest? EG might have to try one TP, gets canceled, and Kezu ranges from above. Slow Roshan, but steady progress being made, and EG not showing many signs of really committing to this. Universe. Shadow blading forward, like he wants to try and move towards that pit, but I think EG know it's just too long of a journey and an unlikely one even should they arrive. Now they make their move under cover of Moonlight Shadow. They walk past a Riki Illusion. By the time they get in position, it's already too late. They still want to fight this. Claim. They want to take the engagement, but the Peel Illusion search forward and they get onto the Shadow Shaman. Glimmer Cape retreat, but the chase is on and mid one's there. Starts it off with the Yule Scepter. Holding him himself in position for now. Crit drops down and is in trouble as the peel locks on him. Meanwhile, the Batrider onto the back lines. He gets off the BKB lasso, trying to control that Earth, that Elder Titan, but a really good Chrono from Universe comes through. What can Yapsor do? He's stolen it. He bubbles up the Pugna, keeps him in place for now, and Secret have the extra lives. They've got the firepower running through the void, pummeling Arteezy as well. Streak after streak being claimed here. Secret rampaging through EG. GG. A must-win game, and they do pull it off. Wow. They need to go 4-0 to avoid an 8-8 eight and eight fate that they still have a shot small as it may be but liquid and fanatic are up next for them wow this game 
it was it was EG being stronger. Or sorry, it was Secret being stronger, and then EG overtook them, and then Secret fought that phase so well, and then the Invoker came online once he got the levels. It was just a beautiful game of Dota, back and forth. Amazing. Amazing stuff. EG, probably a little frustrated with how that one turned out. Felt like there were a lot of weaknesses in Secret's lineup, but Gapsor just came online, man. He got all the right spells. Mid one carried the early game with Puppy's rotations. Kezu dominated top, and then as the game headed later, Yapsor and MP, they picked up the slack. It yep. was truly a team effort from Secret. As much as, you know, the Yap show was in town, everybody played their role. Also, Ricky by Puppy, right? Like, Yeah. He, I mean, it, it was, was him everywhere. And mid one. Yeah. Him in mid one for the early game with yeah. Kezu, and then Yapsor and MP for late. Yeah. EG looking a little discombobulated, a little flustered. See if they can bounce back heading later today. Still in all right position as far as the, the groups go. But they will need to get at least 1 2 0 here, I think, to be comfortable. Uh, of having that straight upper bracket berth. Any closing thoughts here on the game? I think that game shown that Secret is a team that when they play at the A game could go further. That wasn't their A game. Like I think they could still have room to to be to grow to, and, and get better. Like Secret is a team that other teams need to fare come in main event. They might start in a lower bracket, but they could they could have two ODG. Game could, one was yeah. within their grasp. They, it was a very low margin for error type of draft, mm -hmm. but had they executed a little bit more cleanly, yep. it could have been theirs. And I, I think their their next matchup against Team Liquid will show how far they can make a run. Because you, if you have one team that starts in a lower bracket, you wish it to be a puppy team, because I think that affects a puppy team much less. Like, they're not going to get flustered. They, if they know they're going to be good enough, they, they know they could make a deep run. And that, that secret Liquid matchup coming up later on whatever stream is going to be uh, going to be big. Yeah. Meanwhile, Fnatic is also lurking uh, and they'll have to face them. And, you know, it's easy to just write Fnatic off after an awful start to the groups, but they're also desperate. And, they, you know, a caged animal sometimes is the most fearsome one, right? As they are in danger of being the last team in the group and not making it out of group stage play and onto the main event at all. So you get sloppy, easily a game could slip away. So. With that, it looks like it's lunchtime for The Secret and possibly the EG boys, guys. So that wraps it up here for our opening series. Two more await, though. Stick around. TI7 will continue after this.